I'm Bronwyn Malden. I am a writer and independent radio producer based here in LA. And I'm here at a Gorilla Reads video walk and we're recording in Highland Park. Um, and I'm reading from a book I'm currently working on called Off the Grid. It is set in the not too distant future in a somewhat dystopian future. And we're gonna hear a little bit about one of the main characters. Marcus tightened the strap of his orange messenger bag across his chest. He settled onto the seat of his battered fixie and began pedaling down the street. What with Stephanie having screwed everything up last night, he needed to scope out another place with a wide open breaker box. Nobody had asked him to do it, but he'd take care of it anyway. Sometimes you just had to do the right thing, even though nobody was watching. That's how Marcus knew he was a man of integrity. Placing the pair of wireless earbud headphones in his ears, Marcus headed south. The radio receiver hung from the handlebars in a cloth bag he'd fashioned from an old t-shirt with needle and thread. He knew the buttons by feel, and he manipulated them nimbly through the thin fabric as he slipped in and out of the slow rush hour traffic. He tried to find Radio Mau Mau, the local pirate station, but all he got was static. The FCC must have hunted down their signal and shut them down, again. His tires felt buoyant under his feet and he weaved in and out of traffic with ease. He needed to meet his electronics dealer to pick up new phones to replace the ones they'd had to toss after last night's fiasco. Then he'd head up to the Glendale Galleria to scope out dumpsters in the area. His food supply was running low. Shopping at grocery stores usually wasn't an option for Marcus but at least he had the self-respect that came with freedom from the cash economy. At Sunset Boulevard, Marcus turned left. Two blocks along, he pulled onto the sidewalk to take the number two local. While he waited at the bus stop with a dozen men and women, a steady stream of vendors stopped by offering cigarettes, candy, roasted corn, socks, balloons, stuffed animals, universal TV remotes, CDs, DVDs, and other necessities of modern life. A middle-aged Mishteka in an aquamarine hotel housekeeping uniform leaned against a street sign at the bus stop, her eyes closed, snoring softly. A man with no legs rolled up to Marcus in a wheelchair. At first, he appeared to be selling hand-painted wooden icons from his native Ethiopia, a black St. George in a short afro slaying a green dragon but he turned out to have a collection of unregistered disposable cell phones in a box hanging under the seat of his wheelchair. Marcus bargained half-heartedly at first. The sound quality on those cardboard models was shit. Then he realized the man was offering him a very good price. He could get new phones for everyone. So Marcus reached into his mas messenger bag and drew out one of the battered old iPods he'd found while dumpster diving last week behind UCLA. Andy had taught him how to jailbreak it. Pop open the back to expose the motherboard, flip this switch, solder that wire, and voila, you'd removed all the old files along with the GPS, DRM, and the crappy bloatware. Now you had treasure in the palm of your hand. Several gigs of untraceable, untrackable, unblockable, and unfucking findable on any network virgin storage space. For two of his iPods, Marcus got six new cardboard burners. He still had three iPods left, and the trip to his dealer wasn't necessary after all. As the bus pulled in, Marcus pedaled away. He was going up Hollywood Boulevard, and he went west, heading to Barnstall Park, a crumbling, underfunded municipal arts haven whose Frank Lloyd Wright house had been raised a few years earlier to exterminate a permanent homeless encampment. He knew the place well, having spent countless Sunday afternoons in the park with giant pots of food not bombs, vegetable stew, and loaves of bread, ladling out free vegan meals to homeless men, women, children, and pets. As FNB's master dumpster diver, Marcus had brought in more edible potatoes and beans than anyone else. His trick was stubborn perseverance, fishing through the muck of rotting apples, carrots, lettuce, and strawberries, the decaying slabs of meat and poultry shot through with maggots that filled the dumpsters behind grocery stores and restaurants. 
Let others prove their manhood by holding their hands over flaming candles or training for triathlons. Marcus would endure the putrefaction of other people's waste. He'd also developed a knack for finding and repairing small electronic items like radios, cameras, clocks, and, of course, iPods. He hadn't been back in a while, and it seemed Barnsdall Park had become a dumping ground for aging recreational equipment. Next to the remains of Hollyhock House, Marcus counted five steel swing sets lined up against each other. The last one canted over at an angle so sharp a breeze might topple it. Six rusty chains hung from each frame, but the seats were long gone. About 30 feet away was a line of nine park benches in equally bad repair, molting their orange and brown paint jobs like snakes. Marcus looked around. He was alone in the park except for a few crows screeching heartfelt imprecations at each other. He sat down gingerly to test one of the more serviceable looking benches. When it held his weight, he relaxed onto the bench with a sigh. From where Marcus sat, he could see snow dusting the tops of the distant San Bernardino Mountains under blue skies. It was one of those miraculous clear days in LA that made the city seem almost beautiful.